You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob, and this is episode 653. Thank you everybody for hanging out with us today. I know you have a lot of options, and you've chosen to be here, and we appreciate that. You do have a lot of options, and you know what else you have an option for? A landing pad. How are you going to protect your camera when flying out of the sandbox? And when I mean the sandbox, I'm talking about the desert southwest. Or you could be on the beach in Florida. Wherever you are, protect your drone with a drone you landing pad. Available at thedroneu.com. Why would you want a drone you landing pad? They're specifically engineered for pilots to have a safe place to take off, protect their camera, but in addition to make trigger points to ensure that you remember all the steps once you get in the air, the steps to flying and getting good footage. What am I talking about? I'm talking about all those focus issues I've been seeing online. The landing pad is specifically made for you to point your camera down and for the camera to be able to see the intricate pattern that is on the landing pad so that the camera racks focus or you remember to rack the focus. The landing pad also has multiple other features like the fact that it floats. You may want to get one. I wouldn't recommend taking off and landing on the water, but if you find yourself in a battery emergency error Mm -hmm. in the water, this will be the thing that keeps your drone safe. So check it out. The DroneU.com. All right, Rob, what are we what are we doing today, man? We're listening to a question first that um, is something that we've heard from a lot of people about. They, it's it's a group of folks out there. You might be one of them that kind of want to take things to the next level in terms of their drone business and maybe move a little bit beyond real estate. And so let's listen to uh, Billy the Kid, as he calls himself. Hello, gentlemen. Thank you for the podcast and all the help you've given me. I have your book, Help Me Pass the 107. I have a prospective job inspecting towers in the near future. What type of special equipment do I need? Does it have to be specially insulated, specially protected, from shielded from the transmissions off of that tower? Um, I need to get up close and personal as to looking at the connections, nuts and bolts. Do I need a telephoto lens? Do I have to stay far away? Uh, any, you know, any help on this would be appreciated. Thank you. Billy the Kid from Florida. Thank you very much for the question. Congrats on having a potential job lined up. That's pretty cool. Hell yeah! <laughs> we love to hear about that. Yeah, we sure do. Because we're here to provide you with the information you need to know to be a better businessman and have the freedom and liberty to do business your way. Um, all right, let's go right into this because a lot of people are wondering, ah, I wonder what he's going to say. Is he going to talk about the Z3? Is he going to talk about the Z30? Mm. What is he going to talk about? Well, let's just let's take a step back for a second. Why would you want to use the Z3, the Inspire 1 Z3? Well, if you're budget conscious, you don't have a lot of contracts lined up. Mm-hmm. This is something new that you're doing. The Z3 is going to offer you Zoom unlike any other drone that's out there, uh, other than the Z30. The Inspire 1 Z3 is a good, efficient, cheap setup compared to, say, the M100, M200, or M600 with a Z30 camera. And it'll do the job. It will do the job. Now, here, you may have some issues. Like, number one, um, the Z3 is not good and cannot do live streaming and video recording at the same time. It cuts Hmm. off the live stream. In fact, they never added that functionality um, to the camera. It is really too bad. Also, the Z3 does have a huge latency problem that has Hmm. never been fixed. But as long as you calculate that latency and you kind of know what what to expect it is very helpful so you kind of have to like zoom in and wait six seconds seven seconds and then click your photo button uh, and take that image the z3 is really good because if he's doing these inspections he needs to be able to get behind some of the arrays to actually look at part numbers and serial numbers because what he's really doing and this goes back to construction is permanent record of installation these these cell phone companies want to know exactly what was installed how it was installed and they want to ensure they're getting the most for their money so what you're saying is that or at least in part what you're saying is that what you've learned 
is that they're not necessarily looking at these inspections to try to find what's wrong with a tower, for example. Correct. They, there might be some of that as well, but I think that's what most, pe- most, most people think. Most does. <laughs> but it, there's a lot more to it. True. Like you said, verifying that what they paid for is what they got. That, that is, kind of stuff. That is very true. Now, if you are looking for equipment failures, obviously thermal is going to be the way to go because you need to see if equipment is particularly warm because that does uh, showcase that there is an internal failure on the system. Uh, and that's very, very helpful. But mm-hmm. we have another class that we're doing. As soon as Doug and I are done with intermediate mapping, he's going into cell phone tower inspection mapping because... Um, there's a very intricate way to map poles and map poles with intricate details like this. Like, for example, you go to Arizona and the cell phone towers look like bad palm trees. You go to New Mexico and the cell phone towers look like crappy pine trees. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, there's a wide array. You go to Florida and it looks real weird. Like, uh, you go to Germany and it looks like almost scary the way that some of those things look. Um it, you really have to have an intricate understanding of mapping those. And the whole idea is that you can give the visualization to your client so they can go in and look at the equipment specific details themselves so they can go in and say, you know, I ordered seven magnifiers and there's only six there. Mm-hmm. So I know that there's an issue. Um, it's something that I've actually talked to Joe out of Miami. He works for a cell phone tower uh, company. And we're, we're going to be working with him uh, to kind of go into, you know, what is the really the most efficient workflow and the best way to do these jobs because they are very intricate. But going back to equipment, equipment, excuse me, uh, the Z3 is a great option. If you're mapping, you're going to need the Phantom 4 Pro. I don't think the Inspire 1 is, is really going to provide the level of detail and quality that you're going to need for mm. mapping. Um, but on top of that, so if you have a Phantom 4 Pro, Inspire 1 with Z3, you're looking at probably like... 3500 bucks total. But if you were to have the Z30, it's going to be a lot easier to do the job because the level of zoom is almost 10x mm-hmm. what the Z3 can do. I believe the Z3 is up to 80 millimeters of zoom and the Z30 is, I think, 300. Don't quote me on that. I'm not going to spend the time to look it up and break my flow right now on the show. But the Z30 is significantly more expensive. Like we're talking ten, like tens of thousands more expensive. Really? Well, we're talking $799 here. I'm just, you know what? I'm going to look it up. Screw it. Um, and so what are you going to fly the the Z30 on? You kind of alluded to Z30 it. The Z30 has to be flown on an M210. Okay. Or an M200 or an Inspire 2 or an M600. So if you hmm. were to get an Inspire 1 version 2 with a Zenmu Z3, Drone Nerds has it available for $28.99. Um, a, shout out, a shout out to DJI Manhattan. You can also get it from them. They're some of our close friends and partners. Um, if you get the, the camera alone, it's $8.99. In fact, let's, uh, let's, let's pull up the specs on that while I look up the Z30. I really didn't want to break up my flow because I think there's a lot to be said. The okay, so the Z30 is eight thousand nine hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. So hmm. <laughs> it's a lot more money. So now you're talking if you fly that on an Inspire two, you're looking at thirteen grand for the whole system. Right. If you're flying an M six hundred, you're looking at even more money, about fifteen grand versus four grand. Mm-hmm for a complete so, system and a Phantom 4 Pro to map the tower. So practically speaking, would you would it be important to you to have the Z30 instead of the Z3 to do these kinds of inspections? If I have a contract to do multiple towers per day over a year or so, I would get the Z30 for sure because it's going to make it a lot easier to read those serial numbers and part numbers and confirm permanent installation um, and also see if there's issues. Like, I mean, how are all the cell phone towers in Houston right now after Hurricane Harvey? Right. Yeah. Of course, for some of that stuff, you might need the thermal again. You're going to, because you're going to be going deeper in terms of what you're inspecting. Um what else, as far as the interferences are concerned, what does he need to know about that? Well, again, I would recommend that anyone who's flying cell phone towers gets um, the RF Explorer 6G combo. Let me get a link for you right now, buddy, so you can have that. Um, and it's really going to showcase if there is massive interference on those bands. Mm-hmm. But in all honesty, I don't think that they're going to have issues. You can fly very close 
to cell phone towers without having interference issues. But again, if it's a specific type of cell phone tower, uh, you need to know what you're dealing with. You need to know if there are interferences. And the only way to do that is if you have the RF Explorer uh, 6G combo. I am going to give you the link right now, Rob. Okay. And that way you can um, share it with the podcast in the show notes. Here it is. Voila, voila. C'est va bien. Um, as they say. So a very important part or yeah, part of your repertoire of equipment if you're going to be doing these for sure is to have one of these. That is true. Okay. That is true. You're definitely going to need one of these okay. with, without a doubt. Um, there you go. The link has been sent. But what I hear you saying, I think, is you really wouldn't want to tackle these without a zoom camera. True. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. And whether mapping is the answer for you or not is really dependent on what the deliverable and the goal is. But your zoom is going to be killer and make your job a lot easier because right. you can fly further away. You can park the bird in the sky. Like, for example, you if you had an M600 with a Z30 camera, you could park the bird 40 feet away from, you know, from the tower itself, avoid, you know, more interference issues. Uh, you could be in GPS mode and you could freehand move the camera with the application in your finger. And just float and get what you need. Exactly. Yeah, that would be actually very, very handy. What about, so you talk about mapping these things and what are examples of the deliverables that you, they might potentially want that would cause you to need to map it? Does that make sense? Uh, it's really up to the client, dude. It's not it's not really black and white. It's very gray. No, I understand, but I guess I'm just wondering what would they even want that would require it to be mapped? Is there anything? Mm. Some kind of measurements maybe that they need to make or If they wanted to add more equipment, I could see how that could be important. Yes. Mm. But again, haven't that run makes a, sense. haven't run across that yet. Add more panels or something to the same mm -hmm. tower or something like that yep. that they could really get in there and measure. Yep. Hmm. I really wish my T-Mobile service would jump towers better. I can always tell when it jumps a tower. There's always like a little lag. Yeah, that, that whole cell phone thing. I, well, my I, phone dies when I walk out of our office because we have a, I don't know, a special antenna here in the office for uh -huh. Verizon. But I lose the call when I leave the office. Way more information That's than anybody funny. cares. I actually, so there's another thing, and this is in my, um, if you go to takeinflight.com, T-A-I-T-K-E-N flight.com, I think it's actually on the drone you site now too. And it's like the ultimate drone kit and it's everything that I take. I actually put in there the cell phone booster that I installed in my car because it's so useful. Yeah. And handy. it's really useful when your wife or significant other is on their phone for an entire trip and then you turn it off. Watch what happens. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just saying. I'm glad Sarah doesn't listen to the show. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I think that answers the question. And if you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. And if you want to learn more about cell phone tower mapping, we've got a course coming up on that. But I think you should become a member because there are 25 classes that will help you out gain the competitive advantage, and you'll have a community of like-minded individuals who will totally help you out when you need it. That's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Dronio. Ask Dronio.